Merciful God, forgive us for all the times we are hesitant to say the words we most need to say. Hear us in our weariness as we say, help me. Hear us in our sorrow as we say, save me. Hear us in our loneliness as we say, hold me. Hear us in our brokenness as we say, forgive me. Hear us in our vulnerability as we say, love me. Reveal to us, O God, the truth that will make us whole. My friends, listen to what God would say to you. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. If God can say such things to us, perhaps that sets us free to say such things to one another. Words of peace, words of acceptance. May the peace of Christ be with you. It is a delight to see you on this Lord's Day. Welcome to worship at University Presbyterian Church, especially if you are our visitor or if you are worshiping with us online. We are glad that you are here. Along the center aisle, you will find the friendship pad. We hope that you'll write your name in that so you can know the names of those who are around you and make them feel welcome in this place, especially if they are new. And all of you are invited to punch on the porch we will just sweat together outside. Um, hope that you can join us for that. want to say just a couple of things about our life together. One is that if you don't have a name tag, we are in the process of, or if you've lost yours, because, you know, um, we are in the process of ordering new ones. So there's a QR code, or you can email the office. There's instructions in your bulletin about how to get a name tag. You don't have to be a member, but this just helps us to know who you are. 
So we hope that you'll um, order a name tag if you don't have one. Also, I want you to save the date for August the 28th at the end of, it's still July, right? At the end of next month, um, we are going to be um, having a Presby 101 class. That's just for folks who are interested in what this place is about or folks who have been here for a long time and want to um, engage in a conversation about what it is to be Presbyterian. We invite you to that. But that's also the day we're going to be celebrating Dennis Dalkey, who is, Jarrett will say more about later, but Dennis has been our facilities manager, our property manager for 30 years, and he is retired as of Friday. He's going to be part, t- today, he's been um, going to be part-time for a while. But wouldn't you know, the day he retired, water started pouring from the office floor onto the fellowship hall floor. I texted Dennis. I said, you left and everything is falling apart. Um, it's actually fine. We've fixed it. But um, I hope that you will mark that day to celebrate um, our friend. And now, as this is a congregation that loves our children, we're going to welcome them forward with a song for a time together. Hi friends, how you doing? Good? Sort of. So we were away the past two Sundays. Our family drove a really long way, all the way up to a state called Vermont, and it was beautiful. And I want to just think about how maybe you've had this experience too, where you're looking around at something very beautiful. Maybe it's a lake or maybe it's the mountains. And you have a feeling of, wow, God is really good at making things, right? So seeing something in creation helps us remember something about God, about God's goodness, about God's creativity. Well, this Sunday, I'm preaching on a story, uh, a passage of scripture from the Hebrew from the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. And as I was reading it, I was thinking about how God absorbs, takes in some of our pain, all of our pain. And that's sort of a big thing to think about. And I was reading about that, about what it is to absorb things. And you know what I learned about? This plant. This is called a snake plant. I don't know much about plants, but I read about this plant when I was reading about how God absorbs our pain. And you know, this plant absorbs things. It it absorbs the air, and it absorbs the things that, that are in the air that are called toxins that are like not good for our body. And I just think that's amazing that a plant, just a normal old plant, can take in something in its leaves and take it out of the air. So I had to go get this plant. I drove to the nursery, the plant store, and I bought this snake plant. And now, you can touch it, and now I will look at it in my house and remember something about God. And you know, it was also funny. I walked into church today, and I think there's two snake plants by the door. I think Leslie Hicks put them there. And I was like, I could have just taken one from there. Anyway, so now I know. But I just think it's helpful sometimes to have things around us or to notice things around us 
that tell us something important about God. So this is mine. This is reminding me that God can take in things that hurt into God's very self, just like this plant does. And I hope you'll find something that will do that for you. Okay? Will you pray with me? Thank you, God, for the things around us that remind us of you and your love. Bless these children today. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Okay. Nice to see you. Our scripture this morning comes from Hosea, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. The last time I was in this pulpit, the lectionary text was the prophet Amos, the plumb line, if you remember. Today, the lectionary is another Old Testament prophet, Hosea. He was writing around the same time as Amos, when the northern kingdom of Israel was about to be crushed by Assyria. The crookedness of God's people was clear. They were worshiping other gods and failing to care for their neighbor. Their unfaithfulness was breaking God's heart. But Amos and Hosea have very different vibes. Isn't that just like scripture to give us multiple voices to describe the same truth? Instead of Amos's visions of locusts and fire and plumb lines, Hosea lets us listen in on God's inner monologue, gives us a front row seat to this wrestling match that's going on inside God's very mind. To help us hear the word this morning, it's good to know that Ephraim, the name Ephraim, is the beloved name of God's people. And Adma and Zeboim are names of cities that were destroyed. And to help us hear the word this morning, let us also pray now for God to open our ears and our hearts. Let us pray. Living God, word made flesh, Silence our agendas, cast out our casual detachment, confound our expectations. Enable us to actually, really, seriously listen. We know that you can. We pray that you will. Amen. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities, it consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. 
How can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma or treat you like Zeboim? My heart is changed within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. This is the word of the Lord. If you will let me, I want to put this gorgeous piece of scripture next to a poem that I read recently. Not all of us are parents, but every last one of us is a child. And this poem by Ada Lamont, like this passage by Hosea, captures the tender power of that relationship. Listen. When the doctor suggested surgery and a brace for all my youngest years, my parents scrambled to take me to massage therapy, deep tissue work, osteopathy, and soon my crooked spine unspooled a bit and I could breathe again and move more in a body unclouded by pain. My mom would tell me to sing songs to her the whole 45 minute drive to middle two rock road, and 45 minutes back from physical therapy. She'd say even my voice sounded unfettered by my spine afterward. So I sang and sang because I thought she liked it. I never asked her what she gave up to drive me or how her day was before this chore. Today, at her age, I was driving myself home from yet another spine appointment, singing along to some maudlin but solid song on the radio. And I saw a mom take her raincoat off and give it to her young daughter when a storm took over the afternoon. My God, I thought, my whole life I've been under her raincoat thinking it was somehow a marvel that I never got wet. Church, let's just say it. Our whole lives, through every storm, the storms we've created for ourselves and the ones we've just stumbled into, we have been under the shelter of God's loving and steadfast arms. The intimacy with which Hosea describes God's love for us is stunning. Can you picture God's steady fingers balancing teeter-totters, cheering at first steps? God's soft shoulders wet with tears and slobber after a snuggle fest. God's dishpan hands making more mac and cheese. And then, just as passionately, can you hear the disappointment, God's woundedness at the child's waywardness, disobedience, God's ache at the natural consequences of their actions, God's hurt at the child's hurt, One translation calls this section of the prophet the broken-heartedness of God. Now, I don't know a one of us who can't connect to this on some level. As those of us who have known that holy love of a child. As those of us who have been the recipient of that love, especially after a prodigal season, And even as those who access this depth of feeling only through grief of what was lost or longing for what could never be. 
But I tell you, reading this has cracked open my heart for the pack of parents that I know in this congregation, whose names I will not speak, but whose stories have been bravely told, or perhaps only hinted at. Those parents who say on the daily, how can I give you up? How can I hand you over? Even amid the storm of addiction, the storm of mental illness or long-standing estrangement, the storm of depression or debt or divorce, you continue to hold your raincoat open with deepest love. And hear me plainly, this love often means limits and tough decisions and boundaries and therapy that well may drain your entire bank account. But I hear you when you say, how can I give you up? You are an echo of God's words. Hosea ends this passage proclaiming that God will not give up on his people. God chooses not to give her people what they deserve. But what I want us to notice here is something important about how God says this. God says, my compassion, it grows warm and tender. I will not execute my anger, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst. If I understand the text, the reason, the reason that God has the capacity for this depth of forgiveness and this grand love is because of God's divinity. The Holy One is holy other. As one scholar puts it, God absorbs the punishment that Israel deserves. God absorbs the pain in order to maintain the relationship instead of blowing it all to bits in anger. At the risk of reading Christocentric theology back into Hebrew scriptures, I cannot help but see this text as deeply revealing of who we understand God in Christ to be. The word we use for what happens with Christ is atonement, at one meant. We Christians proclaim that Christ makes us at one with God, at ease, at peace. Perhaps we'll do a sermon series on atonement theories one day. There are so many different ways that Christians talk about this, and some I find to be a bit disconcerting to our modern ears. Wrathful God demands innocent substitutes. Jesus as ransom paid to the devil or God like a business deal. But here in Hosea, what we see long before the cross is the love of God that atones, that makes one, that absorbs the brokenness and pain and continues to choose new life and ongoing relationship. This is not something we can do. We are not God. But thank God that God is. And thank God that we are the ones who are saved by such a love, held by such a love, told of such a love in this place over and over again until we can somehow, some way, come to trust it and be shaped by it. Jared and I are parents. We try not to take that for granted. When our kids were little, even now, to this day, when they get hurt, Jarrett will pull them onto his lap and sing Towns Van Sant to them. If he were preaching, you know he'd probably sing it to you. 
but today you have me. So I'll just tell you the words he sings. If you needed me, I would come to you. I would swim the seas for to ease your pain. I am excruciatingly aware that there is pain that he will not be able to ease with that song. For friends, we are human. We're broken, bruised, belligerent. And try as we might and try we should, the truth is that our raincoats are just not big enough to keep all the storms away. But we need not fear, for God is God and no mortal. And God does not come in wrath. God's compassion is warm and tender. God is still teaching us to walk and taking us up into God's loving steadfast, everlasting arms. So snuggle in. Amen.
As those who take shelter under God's wing, let us do our best to put words to uh, that experience of being the church together under God's care. Will you join me in the affirmation of faith? Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. And so we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Meg already alluded to it earlier, and perhaps you have read about it in our publications, but this week does mark an important milestone for Dennis Dahlke, who celebrates 30 years of faithful service to this congregation as our property manager. Um, Dennis is the one who has ensured that whenever you walk into this building, you find a clean and hospitable space ready, um, ready to welcome you. And what's more is that Dennis has done all of this with a, I would say, a true servant heart. He understands that that he doesn't just mop floors. He doesn't just set up tables. He doesn't just fix pipes. He's creating a ministry of hospitality that is no less crucial for being behind the scenes. Um, Dennis has decided that uh, this is the season for him to retire from full-time work, though we will not be uh, totally left bereft. He is going to continue with us in a part-time capacity. Um, We will celebrate Dennis's ministry among us on Sunday, August 28th, following our worship service. Um, And so I ask that you please put that on your calendar and and show up and and be present for, for him that day. Um, If you would like to contribute to a love gift, you may do so by just writing um, Dennis Love Gift in the memo of your check or by going to our online giving platform, and there's a little drop-down menu that also says Dennis Love Gift. Showing love to those who have served God and the church so selflessly is one way that we give glory to God. So let us continue to do that with our tithes and our offerings.
Meg has already said it more eloquently than I could, but we hurt. There's pain in our lives. There's pain in our world. And it's a hard thing to realize when our raincoats aren't big enough to protect us, to protect the ones we love from all of that. And that's precisely what I find powerful about prayer. Um, if you ask me, prayer begins when you recognize the limits of what you can do, and you can entrust that into God's more capable hands. So I'll invite us to bow our heads together and come together in prayer. Can we talk straight with you, God? Can we tell you how it is with us? Can we name all the reasons why it is that we wander away from you? Well, we're anxious for starters, for ourselves and those we love. We ask ourselves how long until we hear the doctor say it's terminal, or when might mental illness creep in and tighten its grip on my family. So hear us as we pause for a moment of silence and pray for all who contend with diseases of mind, body, and spirit. Meet us in our anxiety, we pray. Call us home, O God, and we shall come trembling. The truth is, though, that we're more than anxious. We're actually quite afraid about the future. We're filled with this dread that maybe tomorrow won't be better than today. Our corporate existence is perched between so many competing forces, climate change versus economic ruin, domestic affairs versus international t turmoil. It's enough to make the sturdiest of souls afraid. And we certainly do not make the best choices when we are afraid. So hear us as we pause and pray for those situations that fill us with dread. Meet us in our fear, O God. Call us home, and we shall come trembling. Lord, there's a whole host of other factors that set us off in every direction except the one that leads to you. And yet our hearts are and always will be restless until we find our rest in you. So call your children from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Do not give up on us, we pray. Do not let your compassion cool. Do not turn your face away from us. You are God, and we are not. You are the Holy One in our midst. And so that is where we will endeavor to seek you, not far away in some undiscovered country, but right here among us, the glue that holds us together. We can ask all of this and dare say even count on all of this because of your son, Jesus Christ, the promissory note of your presence and the blank check of your commitment to pursue us to the ends of the earth, no matter the cost. It is in his holy name that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
go out into the world in peace and have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.